Hello, everyone. My name is Robel Jakob. And I'm Paul Price. Our mentor is Wandemu Zegeye, and our faculty advisor is Dr. Farzad Mozami, and this is the Private Certificate Authority for IoT Group from Morgan State University. Project goals. So with this project, we intended to deploy a private certificate authority for Internet of Things devices. In this particular case, the Internet of Things device is a Raspberry Pi. We also set out to manage that device with Amazon Web Services for IoT, or AWS for short. The users should then be able to obtain a signed certificate from the certificate authority to secure their websites and applications. A little bit of background on public key infrastructure, or PKI for short. A PKI is a system for the creation, storage, and distribution of digital certificates, which are used to verify the identity of online entities. The registration authority is an authority that verifies user certificate requests and tells the certificate authority to issue those certificates. The certificate authority binds certificate key pairs and it issues signed certificates as well as signs those certificates. A little note on the certificate authority. Typically in a public key infrastructure, the certificate authority is a third party, which is the main reason for creating a private certificate authority. The directory here stores the certificates and the users are communicating entities. Note that these users, Alice and Bob, are human in our example, but do not have to be. In the case of our project, they are devices. So before we can create our own private certificate authority, we must first install the proper software. For our project, we use the Ubuntu Linux operating system, which is an open source operating system with a user-friendly interface. Being open source, we are able to change configuration files to our desire. We will also be running the software on a virtual machine called VirtualBox. This allows us to test different code without worrying about messing up our actual computer. We are using this virtual machine for testing purposes before ultimately transferring the process over to our IoT device, which is once again a Raspberry Pi. Once the OS is installed, we can begin by setting up our private certificate authority. During this process, we made use of Step CA, which is an open source certificate authority used for creating public key infrastructures and other certificate authorities. Once again, the reason we are deploying our own private certificate authority is to make our devices more secure as we no longer have to rely on third parties to obtain a certificate. And we also don't have to worry about web public key infrastructure threats such as hackers. So next, we must generate a certificate chain. The purpose of a certificate chain is to validate a user certificate by connecting said certificate back to a root certificate of a verified certificate authority. As you can see in the diagram, there is an IoT device with a certificate. The IoT device's certificate has its name, its public key, and a signature from the intermediate. To the right is the intermediate certificate authority certificate, which is signed by the root. And finally, all the way on the right is the root certificate authority certificate signed by itself since this certificate we generated automatically when creating the private certificate authority. So why do we need the intermediate certificate authority if we can simply connect the IoT devices certificate to the root? So the intermediate certificate authority is put into place as an extra layer of security. When deploying possibly many certificates for different IoT devices, you can relay that responsibility to multiple, multiple intermediates other than having a root deploy all the certificates. And now, if one of the intermediates were compromised for any reason, only a few IoT devices would be compromised rather than all of them if the root certificate authority deployed all of the certificates. For our we enabled an automated certificate management environment, ACME for short. ACME protocol allows for the automation of interactions between certificate authorities and their users' web servers. Clients can obtain or renew certificates without the CA having to manually interact with the client or the user. So the next step is securing a locally hosted website on the Ubuntu virtual machine. 
First, we deployed Apache, which is a very popular web server software that enables us to host websites that can be accessed from the internet. Next, we simply added our newly generated certificates to the Apache configuration file and created a simple website HTML. When accessing the website, we receive a prompt saying, hello, TLS. There is also a lock besides the URL, which means that the website is being secured with HTTPS using transport layer security. Transport layer security, or TLS for short, is a security protocol on the application layer that creates a tunnel for the secure communication between an application server and a user. A typical unsecure website displays a warning and most likely uses HTTP protocol rather than HTTPS protocol, which encrypts your data so no one is able to obtain that information. As you can see in the bottom right, there's an image of HTTP protocol, which is unsecure, and a hacker can read all of your information. But below that is HTTPS protocol, in which the data is encrypted, so the hacker only sees a random assortment of letters and numbers. So our reasoning behind securing a website has to do with the website acting as an application running on an IoT device for testing before we eventually secure our website on the Raspberry Pi. Our biggest challenge on this step was getting a secure website without a warning being displayed on when the page is visited. So next we moved on to configuring the Raspberry Pi using the same setup process previously done on the Ubuntu virtual machine. So after deploying certificates and securing our locally hosted web server, we can move on to getting the Raspberry Pi to connect with Amazon Web Services IoT. So the first thing we did was we created an Amazon Web Services IoT account and uploaded our certificates under the name of our IoT device. Then we did something called attaching a policy to the IoT device. The role of the policy is to define the permissions of our IoT device when it communicates with Amazon Web Services IoT. For the purposes of this project, we simply allowed all actions and set the Raspberry Pi to act as an IoT device communicating with Amazon Web Services. So what is Amazon Web Services IoT? So basically, it's a service provided by Amazon Web Services that makes it easy to securely manage remote IoT devices at a large scale. For this project, we are simply managing one device, and that is the Raspberry Pi. In the previous steps, we set up our IoT device for communication from the Amazon Web Services IoT dashboard. Now, we must communicate with Amazon Web Services from the Raspberry Pi. To do this, we send data to the Amazon Web Services IoT manager from the Raspberry Pi using Python and MQTT messaging protocol. The next slide is a demonstration of how the Raspberry Pi communicates with Amazon Web Services IoT device management. So first, we open up a pre-made Python file that uses MQTT messaging protocol. So we change some of the code specifically for our IoT device. So when communicating with Amazon Web Services from the Raspberry Pi, we need to create a topic name which Amazon Web Services can refer to. So we chose the topic name Demo Topic. So next, we input the certificates into this file, and this basically allows for a secure communication between the IoT device and the, I, the Amazon Web Services device manager. Finally, we get to just choose what message we want to send to the Amazon Web Services. So in this case, we chose to say, hello, Amazon Web Services, what's up? And then all that's left to do on the Raspberry Pi is run the program. So as you can see here, um, it says published topic, demo topic, and then it shows the message we sent, hello, Amazon Web Services, what's up? So that's all we have to do on the Raspberry Pi. And then we can close this and go to the Amazon Web Services IoT Device Manager. We click on Test. And as you can see here, we have to subscribe to a topic. And a topic is basically just, in, once again, the name of an IoT device that is communicating with Amazon Web Services. So we previously set our topic name as Demo Topic. So we're going to hit this. And then finally, we click on Subscribe. And if we uh, wait for a few seconds, we should see any messages being sent to Amazon Web Services from our device. And as you can see here, the message that we made earlier is being displayed. Hello, Amazon Web Services, what's up? So as you can see, we can now communicate with Amazon Web Services from our device. And messages can also be sent from Amazon Web Services using publish a topic, which is basically the same thing as subscribing, except you're sending a message instead of receiving one. So to conclude this demonstration, 
Amazon Web Services IoT Device Manager can manage and communicate with multiple devices. So for our results, we were able to successfully create our own private certificate authority to deploy certificates for the Raspberry Pi. We were also able to secure a locally hosted website on the Raspberry Pi using the certificates generated by our private certificate authority. And finally, we were able to connect to our Raspberry Pi with Amazon IoT by sending a message to the Amazon Web Services IoT Device Manager using MQTT messaging protocol. And here we have some real world applications. So for commercial applications, we can integrate the IoT devices into city infrastructure. For example, traffic monitoring or public safety applications. And in hospitals and the healthcare industry, we can use IoT devices for health monitoring. Um, we also have some smart home applications here for home automation, home security and monitoring, and for home networking. For the industrial side, we have IoT applications for predictive quality and predictive maintenance to remotely monitor operations. And future work. So if we were to continue with this research, we would want to further our understanding of cryptography and be able to better secure communication and applications. We would also want to further our understanding of AWS for IoT and using AWS with a larger quantity and variety of devices, possibly managing a fleet of IoT devices. And here are just our references. Thank you all for listening.